Today in our 2015 Ford F53 chassis motorhome, we're going to be taking a look at installing the Roadmaster rear anti-sway bar, part number 1139-144. Here we are with our manufacturer's suspension setup. As you can see, our motorhome is going to sway back and forth quite a bit. And the swaying motion is going to add fatigue to the driver trying to always keep your vehicle in a straight line. And you can see as we're going, even on a straightaway here, we're getting a lot of side-to-side -side swaying motion. It's causing a lot of feedback in our steering wheel from the swaying action in the rear of the motorhome. Now as we go back and forth now, you can see that our suspension stiffened up a lot and our vehicle's not swaying anywhere near as much as it did before. It's going to give you a better feeling going down the highway. Now we'll begin by loosening up the four bolts that hold our four U-bolt nuts and we're going to slide a plate up on there and we're going to put our nuts back on, in place. We'll go ahead. We're going to loosen these all up. Now these are going to be rather tight, so you're going to want to use a nice long breaker bar to get them loose. Now this plate does come down, so you want to be careful while you're doing this. We're going to go ahead and mount this bracket to the bottom side of our U-bolt plate. Now we want to make sure we mount our bracket with the holes that we're going to attach our sway bar to, to the front and pointing to the inside of the frame rails. So we're going to orient it like this. And once we have all of our nuts in place, we want to run up our bolts evenly in a crisscross pattern to set our plate back in the place on the axle. We're going to run, or run these all the way up until we have the threads at, the, at least at the end of our bolt, our nut, or sticking through. Now if, if your U-bolts are not long enough, Roadmaster does offer a U-bolt kit. Now once we have our bolts run up evenly, we can go ahead and set them to our factory torque specs. And once we have this side all torqued back down, we're going to repeat the process on the other side. It's identical. Now we're going to take our split bushings, and we're going to take the supplied grease that comes with them, and we're going to apply some to the inside of our bushing that's going to help cut down on any kind of squeaking noise that we might get from the bushings. Now this is really sticky stuff, so you want to be careful with it. Now that we have our split bushings lubricated, we're going to take our sway bar and get it into position. Now you'll notice that our sway bar has a dip in the center where it kind of curves down. That's going to go to the bottom to wrap around your axle. You can take our split bushings, we'll open them up, we'll set it into place, and we'll do the same on the other side. And then we're going to get somebody to help us and we're going to set our sway bar up onto the brackets. Now you can see there's going to be four bolts, bolt holes, on our plate, we're going to use the forward holes. It's going to be that one and that one. It's going to position our bar more forward. We're going to take our 7 16 bolts. We'll drop them through. Once we have our bar intact, that'll slip up over that. And we can put some nuts and washers. Okay, once we have it in place, we can just let it swing down. Now we're going to take a 5 8 wrench, place it on the top of our bolt, and an 11 16 socket, and we're going to tighten up the four bolts that hold our sway bar to the bracket. And we'll repeat that on the other side. Now that we have our sway bar bolt to the bottom of our plates, our, our spring perch plates, we went ahead and set our brace on. It's going to go up to our frame rail and I've clamped it to the frame, keeping it as straight as possible. So we have it up against our exhaust hanger here. 
We want to make sure there's nothing behind before we drill any holes. On this side, we're perfect. Now we're going to use our half inch bit to mark our center. Now we can go from the inside and drill our holes out in a step process until we get to our half inch final destination. Then we can take our 7 16 bolt with a flat washer. We're going to place this bracket back up in the position. Then we'll take another flat washer and a nylon lock nut. Place it in the position. We'll do the same for the other bolt hole. Hold by a flat washer and a nylon lock. We can take our three quarter inch socket and, ra and wrench and we'll run them down. Now we can snug up ones that go on our sway bar links. You want to make sure you put these bolts with the nuts to the inside so you're not going to have any interference with your leaf springs. Now we're just going to temporarily tighten these down. We're not going to torque them down just yet. Now that we have everything in place and snugged down, we can go ahead and torque them down to the specifications listed in our instructions. We can get our top bracket. And last, we'll tighten up our shackle bolts. Now you want to set those to the proper torque. You don't want to over tighten them because it's just going to smash the bushing and put some premature wear on your bushings. Okay. And we'll repeat this process for the other side. And then we're willing, then we'll be ready to take it down and try it out. And that's going to do it for our look at and install of the Roadmaster rear anti-sway bar for the Ford F53 chassis on our 2015 Ford F53 chassis motorhome.